All right, so these are super shoes and they're not just any super shoes, they're illegally super. Skyward X, so Taylor Nib hooked me up with a pair of these bad boys so it could feel like um, just test them out and I'm probably the official Taylor Nib shoe tester. But let's go and talk, let's go inside and talk about why super shoes can be really, really awesome for your running. Okay, so here we are with these bad boys, the Skyward X. So this isn't any legal super shoe or a technically advanced running shoe as it's formerly known as. So 48 heel for men, 46 millimeter heel for the females, like that's how high your heel is off the ground and 43 for the men and 41 for the females in the front. And then one other thing about this shoe is it has a carbon plate. And the carbon plate's quite a biggie because um, if you're not used to carbon plate, it can put stress on your feet. But let's unpack why I think super shoes are good for running. Um, I really believe that we need hip extension based gait. We need to land, travel forward, store up uh, muscular energy and elastic energy and stored elective, um, connective tissue energy in our legs and then release that with a well-timed contraction. So it's land, load, explode, okay? And super shoes are helping people run like that. I've noticed a dramatic improvement in general in people's running forms. In the past, I think a lot of people were scared of the ground or, or just sort of indoctrinated with decreased ground contact time and decreased impact time. And so people ended up picking their feet up off the ground and prioritizing getting off the ground rather than um, actually driving forward with confidence. Um, the other thing is, I mean, I've got elderly people that have started running again and they couldn't run before. Um, so that's a big plus because the more people that are getting out and they're moving, I am not against anything that gets people outside in the sun, fresh air, fresh light and exercising. So thank you Super Shoes for getting more people mobile. Pros are using these to do higher mileage. Um, it's almost a given that at the elite level of running, you need to run pretty high mileage. So north of 100 kilometers a week, but probably 160 kilometers a week. A lot of pros couldn't do that before Super Shoes and now because of Super Shoes they can and it's opening a door to an opportunity that was almost denied on them. Yeah, we can have a debate about whether that's good or bad, but the Super Shoes are here to stay and they are 100% a performance enhancer. Um, another little known bit of about the Super Shoes is that um, why I like them, one of the reasons I like them, they can often improve your run mechanics. Okay, so we talked about improving your run form because you start to land and then you roll off. This is called a four foot meta rocker, okay? And it's teaching and encouraging people to tow off. A lot of people were picking their foot off, off the ground before they even got the chance to tow off. So biofeedback, you're learning to feather off the ground, to roll forward and roll off your toes with super shoes. Okay, and you're rewarded for pressing them into the ground and then timing the bounce back out. Um, so yeah, you bend the plate and you kind of spring forward. It's also adding a sense of elastic energy return system to running, which is what makes you efficient. So before we had this very muscular approach, you need to be hard, stiff, stiff tendons, hit the ground, decrease ground contact time. And super shoes are adding a sense of rhythm and bounce and elastic energy. Um, you'll hear more and more commentators talk about relaxed running, whereas that wasn't in the verbiage before. Um, so from that point of view, it's changing the narrative of, of running to a far healthier paradigm where we start to learn that your whole body is an energy return system um, and they really, really work. Out of interest sake, a lot of people that do a lot of drills are shutting the door on super shoes. So if you're really working on high turnover, decreasing gun contact time, um, if you're a, um, a more of a four foot runner, you're not getting the best. There's a reason there's a 48 millimeter heel on this bad boy. Um, and you, you're actually shutting the door on optimum use of super shoes. And one other thing is like people that sweep the ground backwards or skateboard or hit the ground backwards with the hamstrings, you're not compressing the shoes, you're not getting the most out of the stored energy and the potential of these super, super shoes. Um, so I kind of like super shoes because they go exactly into my narrative, which is press your foot in the ground like you mean it <laughs> and run with rhythm, energy return and elastic energy return. Um, another thing to think about, like lining up your mechanics. So imagine if you were walking in stilettos, right? If you rolled to the inside or out, you'd sprain your ankles. Because of the high stack height, a lot of people start learning how to stack their ankles properly. So you'll see people disrespecting their ankles. Like I'm not gonna punch anything like this because I'm gonna hurt my wrist. A lot of people roll with really, really bad stacked ankles. And what happens is you roll over on this um, super shoe 
and it's, it's going to be bad. So what happens, a lot of people start lining up and correcting the mechanics. You see knees straightening out, um, pronation improving, and so the high stack height can improve your running. It also cannot, okay? So you might find that you're rolling in on your ankles too much, and then you do not want to roll your ankles in one of these shoes, and that is one of the risks of the super shoes. Do not run in super shoes on unstable surfaces. Okay, like I'm a bit cheeky running outside on, on the gravel road and with the stones because you can roll your ankle. And if your mechanics aren't good enough, if your mechanics are too much for the shoe, your bad mechanics are too much for the shoe, then you can't run in super shoes. You have to then correct your mechanics. Okay, we've got videos and resources out there to help you correct your mechanics, but first work on your ankle alignment and your mechanics. Okay, so what's the negative side? One is it changes the way you run and change for runners can be problematic. So make sure that you you transition to super shoes slowly. You can't just suddenly only run in super shoes, especially if you're running high mileage, it's too much of a change. So use them wisely. Okay, two is they're expensive. <laughs> Three is they wear out really, really quickly. Um, you know, the mileage on these things is often 150 to 200 miles um, and even less for some people. So, yeah, between that. And I don't like the carbon waste of it. I don't, or the, the waste. You know, to run in a shoe that doesn't last very long for me is, is um, it's too much money, technology, and too much of a cost on the planet, to be quite honest. Um, <laughs> I hope they make them more durable, right? The other thing is the carbon plate. So the carbon plate can get you injured. It's, it's, it's a lot firmer than people are, are used to. And so you've got to watch out for that. I highly encourage people that use in super shoes to walk backwards, learn soft toes, get flexibility um, through your feet. You're not going to be rewarded for leaning forward in super shoes because it locks up and tightens up your plantar fascia or it might stiffen your toes. So if you lean forward, you'll find your toes go down. You do not want to be running in super shoes with your toes going down hard because when you start bending those on the plant on the the carbon plate, you can end up with plantar plate tears and plantar fascia issues. So learn to stack your posture, forward shift, not forward lean, um, and that'll help. Uh, what's the other one? So those are kind of the main points for some people. There's an increase in Achilles injuries, and that's again because you're taking a longer stride length, you're loading your Achilles deeper. If you've locked your ankles or try to stiffen your tendons when you run, you're going to have to unlearn those bad habits. <laughs> again, walking backwards is probably your friend. Um, and then the other one is weakened feet and joints because the shoe does so much work that you can get lazy in the shoe. And that's probably the number one real risk factor. You do not want weak feet. So a lot of walking around barefoot <laughs> and strengthening your feet and working on your foot mechanics. Um, so I personally only wear minimal shoes with very little cushioning and very, very mobile. I walk around barefoot a lot. I'm always outside, I'm doing the flow rope, I'm my foot in the grass, I want to be grounded. I want as much good sensation through my feet as possible. Um, so I feel totally comfortable with running in super shoes once or twice a week if I feel like it. Um, but if you're just running in super shoes and you're not doing the foot care and the footwork and not understanding your joints mechanics, um, you might find they're really amazing for a while, but at some stage you're going to have to pay the credit that you're building up. Okay, so strengthen your feet, be responsible. Um, transition slowly and then yeah go out there and rock them um, and yeah there's a lot of good out of super shoes and please let's have you know so many people you you got caught in a paradigm minimum this is good this is good that's bad it's a tool use it for what it is does it have downside yes does it have upside also yes okay so we hold knowledge lightly in our hand we don't get hung up on details we want to get out there we want to make the world a positive place no fighting, no arguing, please. You know, everyone can run. Everyone's welcome in the running table. The most important thing is that we're part of movement and we want to make that world a better place. So get out there, maybe try super shoes and enjoy your running.